This is module 40. And so as we move into module 40, we'll start to talk about the basic properties of logarithms. Now, this is the way that Alex provides those properties. But if you look on your sheet that was given, um, they have the same properties here. They just don't use M and N. They use X and Y. But they have the product rule here. They have the quotient rule there. They have the power rule there. And then, of course, they have some other rules that we haven't gotten into just yet. So the three we're going to use here is the product rule, which tells us that the log of a product is the sum of their log separate logarithms. Think about that. Logarithms are exponents. And when you multiply expressions with exponents, don't you add their exponents, right? Their individual exponents. So same thing here. If you're doing division, right? When you divide expression with exponents, you end up subtracting those individual exponents. And it's always the top exponent minus the bottom exponent, okay? And then if you always, if you have an exponential function raised to another exponent, you end up multiplying those individual exponents together. So this is the product rule, the quotient rule, and then the power rule, okay? And so we're going to use those to um, fill in this example. So it says fill in the missing values to make the equations true. Notice that they're adding the two separate logs together, right? And when you do that, that means you need to multiply their arguments. So here we should have 11 times 7, which is 77. So 77 is what would go inside the box. Here, they're subtracting, which means you're going to end up with a fraction. Now, they already have the 11 at the bottom, which you're missing is the 9 that goes at the top. It should always be the top exponent minus the bottom exponent. Now, here, they have log base 3 of 1 over 25, and then it equals to negative 2 log base three and they want to know what goes here. Well, in order to do that, you first have to rewrite this as this. And then once you have it written like that, you'll be able to see that the power comes down to the front, right, as negative two, and you just have log with whatever's inside that parentheses. So what has to go inside that parentheses? Well, first of all, the negative is going to turn it into a fraction, right? So what I'm going to have here is not going to be a fraction. It's going to be a whole number. And then what number squared gives me 25? It should be 5. But let's double check that. Is 5 raised to the negative 2 equal to 1 over 25? It is. So we have correctly rewritten this expression, correct? All we need to do now is whatever was inside here is now what's going to go inside this box here. So the answer for that one is five. That one's the trickier one of the three. Now let's move on to the next topic. Expanding a logarithmic expression problem type one. So it says use the properties of logarithms to expand log y of, to the eighth power of x. Each logarithm should have only one variable and it should not have any exponents or radicals. Assume that all variables are positive. They have to be, right? Because when we take logs of an argument, the arguments have to be positive. So the first thing we're going to do is separate any um, products or quotients. So I do see here that these two things are multiplied. So I'm going to separate it into log of one um, argument plus, because the product rule tells me that if they're multiplied together, I can separate them with the plus. So this would be log and then x. Now this doesn't have a base. It does. It's imaginary, right? It's an imaginary 10. And so these are also going to carry that same base, which is imaginary 10. Now, 
I do have them so that each logarithmic has only one variable. What I don't have is that it doesn't have any exponents. This one's good to go. That one is not. So remember the power rule. The power rule says if I do have a power there, it just has to go to the front. So this exponent here is going to go to the front, which means in my next expression, I'm going to have 8 in front, log base y plus log of x. And now I have logs with one variable only, and none of those arguments have exponents or radicals. Radicals are exponents, right? So let's try problem type 2. So here I have a quotient, actually. I have um, log of the cube root x to the 7 to the z. And because it's division, I'm going to have minus log of y squared. Now, a radical can be written as an exponent. It's log of x to the 7 z to the 1 third. And then I can simplify that expression in here, and this would become x to the 7 thirds and z to the 1 third. I can also take this entire expression and separate the product. So I get log of x to the 7 thirds, a product means I'm going to add log z to the 1 third, and then this term is just going to come down log y to the second power. Once I have all the logs separated with each of their individual variables, then it's just a matter of bringing each of their exponents to the front. So I end up with 7 thirds log base x plus 1 third log base z minus 2 log base y. And this is the final answer that they want. <coughs> There is a fast way to do this problem, okay? What you can do, and I'll show you how to do it, is you have three variables here, right? So you know you're gonna have log with an X, log with a Y, or no, Z is on top. Do the ones on top first, and then do the ones on the bottom, okay? Then, um, the ones that are on top should be positive. So this should be positive, this should be positive, and then the one on the bottom should be negative. Okay, so you write them as individual um, exponents or individual variables. You also include the signs based on if they're from the top or from the bottom. Then the last thing to do is just write their exponents in front. The bottom is the easiest. It has an exponent of 2. The top is not that easy because this is um, a one-third fraction. So it's actually 7 over 3. And then this has got an imaginary 1, so it's 1 over 3. And notice that I got the final answer without having to do all these steps. Okay, Let's try that same kind of thing with this rule here. Now this one's a little bit tricky because you have this in parentheses and you cannot get rid of that, okay? There's no rule for the log of a sum. There's no rule for it. The only thing we have is log for a product and log for a quotient. That's it. And then log for a power, okay? We do not have a rule for log of a sum, okay? So this will not be able to go away. I'm still going to keep that 4 plus x as an argument. So the different arguments that I'm going to have here are going to be log. Um, actually, this one you might not be able This one's going to kind of force you to do it the old school way. So let's see what we get here. Let's do, actually, no, it's fine. All my bases, all the bases here are going to become your arguments here. 
So six is gonna go there, log x is gonna go here, and then log of four plus x is gonna go here. Then remember, these two came from the top, so they should be positive and positive. This one came from the bottom, so it should be negative. And then write the exponents. Well here, six doesn't have an exponent, so it's just an imaginary one. The x has an exponent of three, and this expression has an exponent of five. And so that should be the answer, okay? If you're tripped up on the shortcut, you can do it the long way, right? Separate it top and bottom of the top minus log of the bottom. And in here, you still have a product. So you have to do log of the first factor plus log of the second factor. And you keep minus log to the fifth power. Now again, cannot mess with this nothing's gonna happen so the only thing I am left to do is to bring my powers down to the front of those corresponding expressions and this is what I end up with which is exactly the same thing as we ended up with when we did the shortcut So now we're gonna go in the opposite direction. And again, you can use the shortcut if it makes more sense to you. So I'm gonna do it the long way first and then I'll do it the shortcut. The long way is to take all of the numbers in the front and put them back as exponents. Do not deal with the signs just yet, okay? So this is gonna be log c w to the third minus log c of z to the one fourth plus log c of x squared. Then start taking the expressions going from left to right. Um, so for these two, it would become log c of w cubed over z to the one fourth. And then if I bring in the last factor, it would become log c of w cubed over z to the one fourth times x squared. You could think of it as x squared over one. So you end up with log c of w cubed x squared over z to the one fourth. But you can write that as a, as a um, radical. It's the fourth root of z to the one, right? The one will be invisible though. And this is the answer. Now, here's the shortcut. The two guys with the positive are gonna go at the top. So w cubed will be at the top. Positive means x squared will be at the top. And then here, this is a negative, so this term will be at the bottom. z to the 1 fourth will be at the bottom. And then you can rewrite z to the 1 fourth as the fourth root of z, okay? So you can use the properties one by one, or you can shortcut if you understand with the coefficients in the front are exponents, excuse me, and the signs tell you the position in the fraction, whether they're in the numerator or they're in the denominator. Now, this last example in this module is called the change of base logarithm, okay? And what the change of base tells us, and here's the rule. If you've got log with the base, right, of an argument, what you can do is you can take the log of that argument over the log of the old base. And you wanna use common log since that's in your calculator. But what else do we have in our calculator? We also have the natural log in our calculator. So you could use that one as well. It is completely up to you which one of these buttons you wanna use. The only thing you can't do is use a common log in the numerator and then a natural log in the denominator or vice versa. If you're gonna to choose to use the, the common log, it has to be the same at the top and the bottom. Or if you're going to choose to use a natural log, you need to do the natural log on the top and the natural log at the bottom, okay? And just to prove to you that it doesn't matter which one you go with, it will be correct. So in this instance, my answer should be log of my argument over 
log of my base or ln of my argument over ln of my base. Let's see what we get in the calculator when we do the first one. So the first thing I'm going to do is type in the fraction button and then log of 1 fourth over log of 7. And I'm going to round to the nearest thousandths, tenths, hundredths, thousandths. So this is negative 0 0.712. Okay, now let's go see what happens if we choose to do the ln. So fraction again, ln of 1 over 4 over ln of 7. And again, we do the same thing, negative 0 0.712. Now, so it doesn't matter which one you choose, you'll still be able to change the base. What you cannot do, and you will not get this correct answer, is if you mix it up. If you do natural log on the top, but then do the common log at the bottom, notice you don't get the same answer, right? And if you do it vice versa, doesn't matter. If they're not the same kind of operation, you're not going to get the same answer. Okay? So make sure if you choose to use the common log, that you do the common log on the top and the bottom. Or if you choose to do the natural log, make sure you use the natural log on the top and on the bottom. And that's it for module 41. Or I'm sorry, 40. We'll get to 41 in just a second.